All right, so here they want us to evaluate these scenarios, these experiments, to understand how solubility varies with, with these two factors, temperature and pressure, okay? Uh, this is related to your discussion for this week as well, uh, the effect of solubility on the temperature and pressure, um, specifically its effect on water, so liquid water. So while pressure may not affect uh, substances and condensed states like solids very much temperature does still have an effect on solubility of solids as well as uh, matter in other phases as well liquids and gases so here uh, we have an experiment we'll look at the first one here and we have two 250 milliliter samples of water drawn from a deep well bored into a large underground salt deposit. So there's salt in the water, obviously. Sample number one is from the top of the well and is initially at 42 degrees Celsius. Sample two is deeper into the well, a depth of 150 meters, and is initially at eight degrees Celsius. Both samples are allowed to come to room temperature and one ATM pressure. And a sodium chloride uh, precipitate is seen to form in sample one. So what is our predicted observation? We are supposed to choose one. Well, if I'm going to predict an observation, uh, the observation that I would predict would be this one. No precipitate would form in sample two. Let's see why. Well, when you look at uh, what's different between the sample one and sample two, it's two things. Their temperature and location right this is at the top of the well sample one and sample two is deep down into the well okay well, if you read the chapter material on the effect of uh, pressure and temperature on solids right we have a sodium chloride deposit you see that pressure doesn't really have an effect on solubility of solids but temperature does so in this case pressure has no effect so it doesn't matter that one's on the top of the well and it doesn't matter that one is at a depth of 150 meters but the temperature will matter sample one is at 42 degrees celsius and sample two is at eight degrees celsius uh, this one's much warmer than this one well what's the correlation between temperature and solubility of solids and our solid is sodium chloride. The correlation is we see a, a general trend most of the time as temperature increases, solubility also increases. So if both samples are allowed to come to room temperature, this is what happens. This one increases, the temperature of sample two increases, which means that more sodium chloride could be dissolved in it, but the temperature of this one goes down, which means that less sodium chloride can stay in solution. So that is why a precipitate came out of sample one as it cooled. This one's warming, there will be no precipitate to form there. Here we have rock candy, uh, and uh, we have a student wants to make two batches of rock candy, he finds an unopened box of cane sugar in the pantry. He starts preparing batch A by dissolving sugar in 500 mils of hot water. And he keeps adding sugar until no more sugar dissolves in the hot water. He's, he warmed it up, got it real hot, kept adding sugar, kept dissolving it, kept dissolving it. As it got hotter and hotter, he added more and more sugar. He cools the solution to room temperature. He prepares batch B by dissolving sugar in 500 mils of water, the exact same amount, same amount of water, same solvent, same volume, but this time it's at room temperature. So he doesn't heat it to 70 degrees uh, Celsius. He dissolves sugar in it while it's at room temperature until no more sugar is dissolved. He lets the solution sit at room temperature. What's our predicted observation? Well, same thing. Okay, our solute is the sugar, it's a solid, pressure will have no effect, but temperature will have an effect on the solubility of the sugar. The higher the temperature, the more sugar uh, this 
this guy can dissolve. So I would imagine that the first rock candy solution is what we call super saturated. Super saturated. He was able to dissolve, to dissolve more sugar than that 500 milliliters of water would normally hold because he warmed it up, he heated it, which increases solubility. But then what happened, it cooled down. And just like what we saw up here, as it cooled, the solubility of the, of the sugar in that solution decreased. And so he's going to get a lot of rock candy because it's got a lot of sugar in it. Uh, the second solution, though, he dissolved sugar into it, but not as much sugar as the first solution because it was not heated. So he was dissolving sugar in it, and then all of a sudden sugar wouldn't dissolve anymore because the the uh, solubility saturation uh, point was reached. Okay, And because he didn't heat it up, he couldn't dissolve more sugar. So what we will see here for our answer choice is that... Um, it's likely that more rock candy will be formed in batch A because it simply has more dissolved sugar in it. It's a supersaturated solution.